Hey guys, welcome back or to the All Star Boxing Podcast. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you jab that like button. If you uh, like this episode, leave us a comment. And if you'd like to see anybody else, please let us know also. Man, that was a really cool episode. We had the head coach and uh, the boss man, Benny Harrington of All Star Boxing Academy. And uh, it's been a busy year. We already start at the first quarter of the year. We spoke of uh, Liam Wilson over in the States on the top rank uh, fight night with the WBO Super Featherweight World title. Uh, we had the All-Star Fight Night just gone. Um, our amateurs uh, fighting next weekend. We've got Jai Dixon in America at the moment. So it's all happening for All-Star. So me and the boss man, we had to, we had to have a catch-up chat and uh, just discuss and break apart what's really going on for All-Star. Um, I'm an advocate. I love All-Star Boxing. And uh, I'm excited to see where it all goes. So this was a cool episode. Uh, enjoy it, guys. Thank you. All right, Benny, bro, thanks for... Uh, I know you're busy as fuck, bro. So um, let me just recap on this past month. I know we're in March. So we're still only just entered the fourth month of the year. So start of the year, pretty much uh, you're in America for a month. That was Liam's fight, world title fight, WBO. There's a diamond, Arizona, March 29th against Oscar Valdez. Uh, that was for top rank. Huge, you were there for a month. We'll, we'll go through all of it Six soon. weeks. Six weeks, bro. Crazy. On the undercard of that, you had the great heavyweight Richard Torres coming through. You would have seen all the faces that um, um, Emiliano Vargas... Mm-hmm. Um, the son of the great Fernando Vargas who fought Austin De La Hoya, Sugar Shane Mosley, Ricardo Mayorga, the list goes on. Uh, we can just go on, 30th of April, All-Star Fight Night, another huge night. You know, things are just happening for All-Star. Uh, Jai Dixon in the States at the moment, US Olympic Training Center, that's the Boxing World Cup, is that Aiba? Yeah, yeah, he's over, oh, it's not Aiba, it's World Boxing, it's called yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, he's over there with the Olympic team. Uh, and taking and then over as, same yeah. weekend, Coach Paul... AOS Canberra with some of the uh, the All-Star guns. So everything's popping for All-Star and it's, we're only just entered the fourth month of the year. How do you how do you juggle everything? Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very stressful. Um, I'm, I'm getting better at managing it. I never used to be. Um, but it's the team. It's the team that we have. I mean, there's no way that I could do that. And that's why I say about the gym here, it's not my gym. It's just, you know, I'm the face that can make sure that the doors stay open, but it takes yourself doing this. It takes Paul doing what he does. It takes Caden with the pros. It takes Lockie with what he does and Joey and Herb and and Lisa. I've missed so many, but yeah, it takes a full community of people and Red with the fight night, obviously. Like it's, man, it's it's crazy. Do you yes. have pinch yourself moments still? Because nah. let's say a couple of years back, you were on the tennis courts. Yeah training kids after work you yeah, know, yeah you're working full-time and now you're just on the plane you're in sydney what this weekend coming yeah yeah you're you're everywhere so it's like yeah i think that some people would have pinch yourself moments and i could understand that but i really don't not not because of an arrogance that i be- think i should not and i was aiming to be here but um I don't think like that, and and the people that we have around, I don't. I hope they don't think like that because you're not supposed to, you know, just get it done. What's next? It's it's actually that mentality of what's next, and yeah, it's not. It's sometimes it's not fun to be in my head because you can't turn that off. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's next? What's next? You you win, you're supposed to, so you don't give you don't you don't celebrate your wins. If you lose, you feel like you suck. But either way, I've been you know taking a lot of. I mean, what you, you see a lot of, you know, when you start to get in your own head and talking about your wins and your losses and what comes up in your algorithm on Instagram, mm. um, a lot of motivational stuff comes up on mine because I'm always talking to people about these type of things, like our phones are listening to us right, listening to us right now. The Kobe Bryant thing of what's it matter? Mm. Like if you win, yeah, cool. You're going to have to come in tomorrow and do it all again anyway. And if you lose, eh, that sucks. But you know what? We'll be here tomorrow when we do it all again. Mm. We have a good fight night. Mad, that was great. We'll see you in November. Yeah. We, we go to America and we don't get it done. It sucks. See you tomorrow. If we win, mad. See you tomorrow. That's mm. that's the mindset of of me. Um, and that's the mindset that I hope that I can push on to all of you guys because that's that's what it is. 
it's it's the you know I know you look up to Drake and mm. it's it's that type of stuff like it is. It's, what, what are you going to celebrate for? Yeah, we yeah. ain't there. Yeah. We ain't even close to there. Mm. Not nowhere near where we where we're trying to get to. And yeah, there's a lot of people along the way that are going to throw stones at us, and that's their that's their trauma. Yeah, we ain't gonna, yeah. <laughs> whatever miss us we with that. That just to... that just comes off like it's nothing because it's just super important that I mean. People say, what keeps, what keeps you going? What motivates you? Um, keeping the doors open. It's not any more than that. It's not deep that I want to have for the gym 75 world champions. My real passion and mission is to keep the doors open so that tomorrow the kids have somewhere to train mm. and, and the, the pros have somewhere to train. And the, yeah, that's, that's I, all. I, I've is. seen you just going you know, year by year by year, that you have to have a team to manage different sectors of mm. where all stars going. And then you're you're in a position now where you just you manage it all, but you're you have to emotionally be so attached to everybody, but the wins, the losses and like you said, like next weekend the next fights are on next weekend. Yeah. The amateurs are on. The next pro, the next, yeah. the next, the next. So it's like, yeah, I think you're at a stage now. And we had this conversation before about, you know, being the first to retire under yeah. the all star banner. And it's like the next one, the next kids are coming through. Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've, yeah, now... we'll see that the next, the, sorry to cut you off. The next, you've been the first pro on telly, but Caden would have been the first to mm. retire. Okay. Um, yeah. He was the first pro that I had uh, uh, far out. Like that's, that's how long it's been. Wow. And we did that from upstairs of the PCYC. Yeah, okay. But yeah, in regards to no, notable pros that, you know, went on and had a, a longer career and Caden only had two fights. But yeah, it's it is that as you as you say, it is just having a great team, like having a great team around you, and yeah, it's it it never ends because some the team will not never always stay the same either. I hope it does, and I pray that it does because I love the people that we have here, um, and they don't work for me. That's not the way it works. That's it couldn't be any further from the way it works. This is yours, and people do what they do, and it's great. And I'm just trying to make sure that they can you know, put in their best efforts and represent themselves as well. That's why I, I wholeheartedly, I say it all the time, it's, it's not my gym. It's not, it really is not my gym. It's, it's, it's the community's gym and it's the people that want to put in the time. And we're always here. We're the one consistent. Caden says it a lot. He's like, you know, anything happens bad in someone's life when you're out of the gym. Don't leave the gym. Mm. Bad shit won't happen if you stay here because you're around positive people we're all we're here Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, and you go off. Uh, you, that you, we always hear it. Oh yeah, you know I got to get back in the gym. I've you know I've been going off the rails a bit. Yeah, yeah, you do have to get back in the gym. Just stay in the gym. Sometimes it gets boring and it's a grind, but it's the one consistent in your life that will always be here. You drive through those gates, you rock up, you'll see people here that are happy and positive people. Bro, be around that. Mm. Don't be hanging out in the valley at twelve in the morning. Don't be. You know, don't be at the pub doing that shit. Like, stay here. Like, yeah, yeah. you're good here. Like, make sure you stay here. Yeah, and that, that's that's the culture you've built here. Welcome yeah. for anybody. For sure. You know, there is a no dickhead policy, but it's like dickheads get pushed out anyway. They don't make it. It, it doesn't. But and they don't make it because we're heroes. Mm. They get teased out of here. If yeah. you've come in here and you're a beat your mm. chest, I'm a cool guy. It's like, man, jump in there then. Jump in with the 17 year old girl that will pump you mm. and then the egos find their way out mm. it's 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 not just in this gym it's in boxing gyms yeah yeah yep. everywhere but i love the fact that I, i've been to different gyms i've yep. done my time bro like oh, for sure we, we can say oh you know I'm, I'm retired and this and that and you know x amount of fights whatever but i've been in the boxing industry where this is why I, i've set this up mm. because i one i love the sport i love promoting the sport will i train a fighter maybe not you know it's it's a different kind of skill set different area some people will be amazing coaches some people will be amazing uh motivational speakers like and, and amazing knowledge. fighters don't make amazing coaches you were yeah. a great fighter mm. i wasn't yeah, yeah. I, I did my time though and that's mm. probably what makes a good coach yeah and not saying that i'm a great coach but someone who didn't achieve mm. you know that a coach lot. paul yeah you know what australian titles three times two times three times silver medalist every time yeah he wasn't a goal medalist but he's he's producing gold medalist and that's what it get, that's what it does because i was much the same it's like we didn't get it done so we got it to prove mm. um and him him more so he he's on the wave that i was on five years ago yeah he's on that 
<sighs> yeah, nice. Where my focus has to keep the doors open to allow it, those guys to do what they can do. Mm. And I couldn't be prouder. Like, I, honestly, I couldn't be prouder of those guys. Yeah, I mean, we've nice. got we got kids coaches that are, you know, they're, they're just starting. They'll get it over the next 10 years. But Coach Paul, he's on it. Like Caden, mm. they're on it. Like they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the guys. Yeah, nice. And, you know, hopefully I can help guide them and lead them. And, you know, when they need me, I'm there. Mm. And, you know, best for me is to sit back and watch. Mm. And it's not even that I have to be proud of them, which I am. It's like they're, they're their own men. They're their own men. They're, they're doing it. Like yep. uh, we're here every day. We see them like they're doing it. You know, mm. I'm doing it with them. But it's yeah, it's mad because you've got all people that are trying to to row the boat the same way. And as you said, anyone that ain't rowing, mm. see ya. Yeah, yeah. Like this isn't the place for you. Yeah, no, this city. And you're, you said you, you know, keep the doors open to everybody. You play many roles. Your yeah. father. You're a coach, like you you facilitate for guys that have had their loss. Like you really carry people through and people get confused of what a, what does a coach do? It's not just cornering in the corner. It's yeah. like you've been through the darkest days so through all the fighters here. Yeah, that's the easy bit. Yeah. yeah. Being, in, being in the corner, it's the easy bit and it ain't easy. Mm. That's not saying that it's easy and that's not saying that we all can't be better at it but being being a coach and being someone that, that you know, is the is the the face of the club to a degree. Um it's way more than that. It's the phone calls from the other coaches at night that we call each other. It's not just them calling me, but it's, you know, Chris Evers, sorry, he's a big part of the gym too, even though he's on Palm Island, he's a huge part of the gym. He's my confidant, you know, he's the guy that I go to for advice. Um, yeah, it's Jamie Pittman, like people like that. Um, yeah, it's it's really, it's much more than coaching fighters. You're a, you're a yeah. psychologist, you're, yeah. a, you're a mentor, you're a, mm. you're a doormat for people to, dump their shit onto you and then oh man like yeah. far out if you see it i must take 40 phone calls a day yeah yeah because you're right. dealing with promoters you're dealing with managers you're dealing with parents you're dealing with other coaches you're dealing with matches oh then you're dealing with your i'm, I'm a husband i'm a father of four i'm a it's it, yeah, it's crazy mm. it's crazy never ends and this is where it's still early days i still feel like also yeah. it's still early days eh? like we'll get on to uh liam soon but he's he's paving the way for the the next batch mm. to come through like he's making what, what's possible you're now you're now rubbing shoulders with Amer uh, amazing people in America yeah. you've seen them all yeah like arms length away yeah, you know sure. you you've seen the the sport the uh, sport of boxing within Australia growing with Eddie Hearn yeah the sponsors that are starting to back these these young fighters now uh the the televised shows that are happening the mm. promoters are all starting to work together now the opportunities that, that are happening like you're now in a position to help these fighters come through. You're producing champions. Yeah, and seeing it, just just seeing it, um, being over there and seeing it and realising how close we are. When I say we, I mean Australia, like not All-Star, but how, how close Australia is to needing, you know, to being at the level. And we are at the level in a lot of cases, but it's not what we all, it's definitely not what I thought it was when I was a kid. I thought America was this place that you've got to go and you've got to conquer. I mean, we spoke about it when we were in Las Vegas, like, and conquering America is very far fetched. It's a very far fetched thought. When we were over there for Tim Tim Zhu Fandora, that was nearly uh, Isaac Cruz's show. Okay. So he was the he fought Rolly before it. When when he walked out, the stadium went bananas. When Tim walked out, it was bugger all. And that's nothing, not, not a slight at Tim. It's just we're we're very lucky here that we have no limit. Or such a really big promoter and all of the other guys. But obviously, it's. That's not me being favoritism to no limit. They're obviously leading the way mm. um, in regards to those big promotions. Yeah, like it's here. We've got it here. You got to do it in Australia. No, no one's going to love an Australian more than an Australian. So yeah, we, we have it right here to do. And yeah, we we can kind of lose that way of thinking. We've got to go over there and get it done. No, we've got it. It's all here. Yeah, it's yeah. all here. We even even with the prep that we did with Liam the lesson that we would take, that I would take, sorry, Liam might have loved it and I'm sure he did, but we don't have to go over there for six weeks to get to, for one sparring partner or two sparring partners. Bring them here. Mm. Stay here. Like, the, you know, put them in an Airbnb. We, yeah. Be comfortable here. We got, we got what it takes. Like our fighters are good. Mm. Uh, the only reason that you need to go over there is for the sparring because they've got so many more people. Bring them over here. Like Australia, yeah, I think... And you, you notice that now with George and Pyro and things like that, they don't go over for big times anymore. Yeah, you know, they yeah, used to. Yeah. 
But yep. yeah, it's, it's definitely to be thought about. Yeah, and that's where um, we'll we'll, we'll jump to Liam's fight now, and that's where uh, uh, Billy. Now that Billy's joined uh, yeah, All Star Boxing, sure. like he's he's now that one that that can stand with Liam mm-hmm. in the gym because Liam's at a level now, world level, and it's like how do we how do we find sparring after him? Is he bigger than Australia? Do we need to go overseas for those for those rounds? You know, Shakur Stevenson and all of them reaching out to Liam. Yeah, for sure. Um, but now he's got Billy Polterhorn. They can, yeah, yeah. They can stand. Yeah, he's with got him. Vegas and Billy. Yep. As yep. you as you know, like Vegas can give anyone. Yep. Rounds on rounds I, I on try rounds. I my hardest. Every, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yourself when you yeah. were there. But yeah, you're right. Billy's a big guy. Um, Vegas is phenomenal. Um, that's just in the gym. Mm. Up the road, you got Dana Coolwell. You got Paro. You got you know. There's a million. I'm, I've missed a missed a bunch, but you know, there's good fighters here. Mm. Like we're good. We're, we're all right. We'll get it done. Yeah, like nice. yeah. So um, Liam Wilson. Oscar Valdez, huge for Australian boxing, huge for Liam. Absolutely. And um, for all of us, for All Star Boxing and uh, us as a team, coach, all of the sponsors, family, like we've known Liam for years, you know. And uh, I had to bring up one of his interviews, I'll try this on soon, but he he froths over the Mexicans, like the, the way they fight. Well, we've known this and um, he idolizes their style of fighting. And uh, just, just to clear this, this was um, a snippet from uh, the press conference. So you were here, you were sitting in the crowd. Yeah, mate. Yeah, big show, big press. Yeah, yeah, massive. So this is what I had to watch, and this is what I I knew Liam was on about. Your camp is all has uh, almost been like a world tour, you know, Australia, Thailand, Vegas, and now Arizona. How's camp been, and has that travel affected it at all, or is it? Do you think you use that to your advantage? No, camp's been a hundred percent. Uh, I'm well prepared for this fight. I put in time in a few different locations to acclimatize uh, and uh, get my body ready for this big fight coming up on Friday night. Um, it's a look. I'm in. For, I'm in for a war. I know I am. I knew this three months ago, so I put in a good hard camp. And thank you for all my sponsors for helping me out to get this all possible. I, um, you know, I'm ready for this. You know, as a young kid, I dreamed of being in, in, in these fights. I looked after all the Mexican greats. And in some sense, I'm fighting the modern-day version of them, Navarrete, Valdez. And I feel so proud and privileged to be up here and a few days out from fighting one of the best. He made it happen. He used to watch them. I know Liam. Like he, well, the, the, And for everybody that doesn't know, Miles knows Liam mm. more than anybody knows Liam in regards to boxing. How long did you box with Liam oh, at from, from the start, right? From, from the, the start. start of your career through to how many amateur yeah. fights did you have out there? Man, that would have been... So Liam joined Kabuta when he was 12. I joined when I was like 16, 15, 16. And then I left Kabuta when I was like 22. So that's like a good seven, eight years. And that's, eight, the, that, and that's the prime of your boxing. Prime, prime. Of your and, amateur boxing, yeah. And so all of those, me and Liam were close, but he would just watch the Mexicans, Marquez, you know, fighting the Pacquiao, like all of them. And he used to love them. Yeah, Morales, and all those all guys. Of them. Oh, mate, he's so him saying this is guy. like, you know, I'm finding the modern day greats yeah. of what I used to yeah. watch. But um, I know Liam, when he would have watched those fights, he would have just glorified, wow, that's going to be me one day. And so seeing this, he he, he achieved that. He Crazy. achieved that. He made that happen. So, like, good on him. Don't you know cry, I mean? skinny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but he, he I know, I know, happen. I know. You're so proud of him too, though. Of course, of because, course. Because, bro, I mean, you know that. Like, mm, you, mm. like he tells us the story. as And, you know, you've been there when he's sitting up at night as a 15-year-old watching those crazy Mexican wars at one in the morning as a 15 year old kid. This is why I tell kids watch boxing. Like mm. t- and I say it to Taj all the time, my young fella, how many fights have you watched this week? Oh, I watch some highlights. <laughs> You're watching the last 15 seconds of the fight. How did it get to that? Yeah. But anyway, Liam's 15 year old watching the fights as, as a 15 year old kid in Kabulcha late at night. No, not, that's not prompted. That's his, that coming from within watching those wars with tears running down his face at 15, 16, 17 years old. Yeah, yeah, he's about it. Yeah. Uh, it, that, it, it comes from in like, he's a different kid, that one. And, and uh, there was a hard gym. Kabuta was a hard gym where it was like, you're not getting out of this ring if you really win. So I understand Liam's mentality. We've had, a, we've had 100 spars over the decade. We've had 100 spars. Thousand spars. So yeah. many, and and they've been fights, <laughs> they've been wars, you know what I mean? So when Coach Benny or someone will be like, oh yeah, you're going to leave tomorrow, we're like, oh man, 
Like I, know I remember, I remember when you first come back, and I'd say that I'd be like, "You got Liam tomorrow," and it's like, you got to prepare mm. mentally that night for what was going to happen. Mm. How, like, because the energy that was going to be, and he's toned down a lot. Okay. He's toned down. Oh, I can't even describe how much more of a professional he is, Liam, in regards to his sparring. You would, you wouldn't even recognize mm. how he spars now. Great, no, nice. no problems yeah. at all. But coming from where you guys come from up there in Donnie's gym. Mm. You know, Donnie, he produces real fighters. And that's it. He produces real fighters. There's no slight on Donnie at all. Like, he's, he got runs on the board. But you guys were having wars up there. Mm. Like, they were, that was, that was kill or be killed. Yeah. And I remember you guys fighting here, having those spars here. They were, and you used to tell me after it, you'd be, even those spars here, you'd be like, man, I knew that was going to happen today if if it got out of hand. I I could, like, you could, you could feel it the night before when I told you. Oh, here we go like it's going to be on and this is as i used to say in the interviews this is you know two o'clock on a tuesday afternoon you're having world title fights in the gym crazy we don't do that anymore mm. but um yeah that's definitely a part of the dna of you and liam mm. coming from where you guys come from which and got you here the, and that's it that's, that's what it. got him here let's that's not it. let's not fucking lie about that that's it that's why he's there yeah because he had you know, Donny going, let's let's go, can't let's go. Like, yeah. sorry for the swear words, beep beep that out. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like that's yeah. that's exactly what he said, and he did it. He did, and and that's why that's where he's hardwired that way now. Yeah. Where I feel he's been that that fighter from the start, where every spars a fight. Even guys like we we know I'm not gonna say names, but they're like, man, bro, is this are you good, Liam? Like, do you not like me? But yeah. it's, it's it, Liam sees red, which is good. You you need you need that. DNA to win. It's a competitive spirit. Like you yeah. need that, and it's know? good to get you t- to get you to where you need to be at. But now we've got to change mm. because it, it didn't get the job done. Mm. So now we've got to make another shift. That it, it, there's a ceiling on that, and he's reached that. So it's it's not you can't see red, mm. not anymore. You can't see red. You can see red in moments, and when you got to go, you got to go. But overall, you haven't got nine minutes. You got mm. thirty six minutes in a world title in 6,000 screaming Mexican fans that want you killed, you can't be emotional. Mm. You can't buy into that. You can't fight off emotion. You've got to use your brain. And, and this uh, is what will happen. did you watch Mike Tyson's trainer? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Customato. Cust- no, no, no. The, um, his other one. Teddy uh, Atlas. Teddy Atlas. He spoke of uh, uh, Valdez and, and Liam's fight. And, and he said it beautifully because he is a boxer mastermind. Uh, you know, Liam... Liam's world class. Liam's half the experience of Valdez. I've got it up here. Valdez was like 34 pro fights. Liam's what, 16, yeah, 17? 14, 15, 16. When he's f- fighting Navarrete and yeah. all these guys, yeah. So Liam's still half the uh, experience. And I just, want to, I just want to play this. This was after the fight, for those that haven't seen it. Oh my God, man. You almost got me, so it means he's a slight second from being a world champion. I swear, I got it. Keep your head up. I don't want to see you like that. I don't want to see you like that. You there. You there. It's a new sport. Yeah. We'll stay in touch. We want to come to the gym, come work with us, man. You're more than welcome. Got it, man. I got it. What's up, man? Best in the world, best in the world, and Liam's an interesting character where he would only take like that's gospel to his ears. You know, if, if some other amateur said, "Oh, Liam should have done this, should have done that," he would be like, "Man, shut up! Like, yeah, yeah. you're not at that level." Yeah, you yeah. know, so someone like Bowder is saying, "Man, you're almost there," yeah. and Liam's half the experience of this oh, great. For sure, yeah. You know, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a he's a modern day great. Yeah. Uh, Liam's half the experience, and he's saying, "You're almost, you're almost there." Yeah, that's he, very mature of Valdez. Because you see a lot of the the guys over there. Nah, were you ever hurt? Nah, I never got hurt. He can't touch me, and he may have been hurt. Um, that to me, as a coach, is that, that's I don't like watching that. Not because it's not good, but it's like, fuck, you know, like, you know, we ain't no sparring partner. Like that's why that's the way it comes across. It's like, come yeah. on, man, keep going, keep it up. But he doesn't. He doesn't mean it like that. Mm. It's just the the competitor in me is like, mm. when you, you you know, you're getting like, oh, you're all right, little fella, get it going. It's like, but. It's, it is what it is, you know, like learn from it, like learn from it, 
rise and and go again because he's right in what he's saying. He, you're very close, mm. and he, we're very lucky that Valdez was so honest and so respectful in regards to that. Because you know, if that's anybody else, they're just like, get out of here, you know, yeah. champion. Oh, I did it. Fuck off. Like, see you later. Yeah. But yeah, like he, um, yeah, he, he he is very close. I mean, fuck, he's very close. Like, it's just a matter of it all. I, I'm no one has and and Donny will agree with this. I keep pointing up there because that's where Caboolture is, guys. Um, not, we ain't even seen the best Liam. We still haven't seen the best Liam. And you, you see it in flash. You see it in glimpses. But, yeah, when he puts it all together. But the, the problem that we have is, you know, he's hit and miss sometimes. And sometimes he's phenomenal for moments. And then he's not like, you know, that's our job to work it all out. But he's very hardwired in the fact that he wants to fight. Sometimes you get Liam in the ring and I ask him, hey, enjoy yourself, have some fun. And he's like, I, I can't even remember having fun in there. Because I just, mm. he just, he's ready, he wants to kill. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're getting him out of it. I say he doesn't spark like that anymore. But yeah, it's 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 a balancing act. And yeah. these, as you said, what's, what's, he's had 15, 16, 17 fights. These lessons that he needs to learn, he didn't get a chance to learn them up the road at the Edens Hill, you know, on those shows or when you're coming through from five fights through to 20 when you're just working it out. Like he got fast tracked, his whole career got fast tracked. He's fighting for the Aussie title on his third fight in front of 30,000 at Suncorp on the Mundine Horn. Mm. He's only he's only ever boxed at that stage, he's only ever boxed three rounds. And he's fighting 10 rounders against, you know, good fighters. So he didn't get the chance to, to do it. So he's, you know, people can be pretty hard on him because it's like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, fuck, mate, like... You know, he his got, first lost Noine right. at, at world level. It's rust into the scene. And then yeah. that's a that's a no-win fight as well. Big, uh, you know, it's a lose-lose. Because if he beats Noine that night, anybody who knows boxing knows that Noine is a dangerous dude. Have a look who he what he'd done before Liam. But if he beats Noine that night in Newcastle, ah, he beat another another Asian fighter that whatever. Like, but he loses, he's a hype job. Yeah. And how does Liam's mindset go when he loses to Noine? What, what do you want next, Liam? Noine, give me Noine. Mm. That's who you're dealing with. You're dealing with a a, a warrior mm. mindset. Like, I'm not going to name names, but you go and have a look through all of your top 10, 15 fighters in Australia. They've had a loss. They ain't gone nowhere near that dude that they've, that's beaten them. Mm. Especially the way he got beaten. That wasn't a split decision. Oh, yeah, let's run it back. Well, he got put down four or five times. And what did he do every time? Yep, get back up. That's all he knows how to do. Because he's a, he's a machine. I love the uh, has lost to Navarrete, has lost to Valdez. He's still on his feet. Yeah, he, he, he's still on his feet. Yeah. The ref stopped it. Yes, but he's like he's still he's their warrior. Yeah, I don't know from sure. years of sparring him. It's like yeah, you know, if he's like, hurt, he he's not going down. Yeah. it's like you're going to go down first. And this is me. the thing that we have to start to work with him is that like there's things that you need to do when you're hurt, but it's what's inside of him that won't allow him to so we've got to we've got to make it happen because he's you know in australia he's always been the guy i had the, i always just say this about when i when liam came across i was like you're that good here that you've got when i was coming through as a fighter the best fighter around was jared fletcher and jared fletcher would go to gyms and spa i would suggest and he'd faint and they'd shit themselves mm -hmm. liam had that in australia he goes to a gym. He's all, you know, what I mean. He's, he's he he can yep. do whatever he wanted. But the, you go and now you level up. They don't know who Liam Wilson is. Yeah. These are these internationals. They don't give a fuck who Liam Wilson is. You faint, they're fainting back and they're throwing like so. You know, he's he's been thrust into it very fast, and um, yeah, he's 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 phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Because you put other people in it that fast and they can't get it done. But you know he's a, he's a winner. He's he's a winner in in the big moments. Just because he lost to two Hall of Famers, mm. you know, yeah, like and there is losses because he come back and he beat Noine in two, which was man yeah. phenomenal. Because I know the the type of anguish that we both went through in that. Um, obviously more so him because he's the fighter. He's got to live with it. But um, Navarrete, he, he, that was a twenty seven second eight count. He could have got it like. You know, I'm not going to sit here and bang on like everybody does in the media. Like, we got robbed. Like, you know, it's boxing. The, these, the results, the results. The results, the results. These things happen. But he very well could have been world champion that night because I'll put it this way. If Liam got put down, he wasn't getting 27 seconds. Mm. 
<laughs> that was over. Okay, fine, sure. Um, so then his only loss is to Valdez then. And had he got the decision against Navarrete, he probably wouldn't have fought Valdez. He would have been on to fight another bigger fight. Who knows what happens there? But yeah, he um, he very well, you know, he could have only had if either he wins that next fight or he or he doesn't. He wouldn't have been back in Australia fighting Jackson England and um, the other dude, yeah, the Argentinian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's all to be thought about. That's what boxing is, though. It's snakes and ladders. Mm. You're up, you're going great. And then, oh, have a loss, and then you got to come back, and you might go the ladder. You mm. you know, it's but when you when you like when the time comes. And you win a world title, all those losses don't matter. No. It's all part of yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. It's that's all part of the exactly. journey. That's why I try you and say that. about those days. Yeah, I try and say that to the amateurs. I try and say that to the amateurs like, oh, they, they're upset when they lose. They're like, man, when you're standing there and you're about to qualify for the Olympics, say, for example, and you do qualify for the Olympics, no one's asking you what your record is. So that's that's another thing to the amateurs. Mate, just fight. Yeah. Just get the experience. If you're 20 and 0 as an amateur or you're 0 and 20, just keep going. Just just get better. Just get better because when it's your turn to fight for that world title or when it's your turn to qualify for a, a qualification event, be it the Olympics, Worlds or Com Games, no one's asking you about your record. So take the fights. You you, you took a million fights mm. that you weren't supposed to win and that you won and some you didn't, but they're all lessons along yeah, the way. Yep. It only matters when it matters. Mm. It doesn't matter at the local at the local tournaments. It, yeah. really, it really only matters when it matters, yeah. No, that's cool, man. And um, just for people at home, like oh, oh, I'm gonna put the uh, the Teddy Atlas interview in the uh, the description, so we can you can follow up on what we're talking about. Where Teddy Atlas is saying like he leaves almost there. He he was beautiful in the first few rounds, beautiful, beautiful boxer, yeah, phenomenal. But then chose to go have a firefight, and that's the emotional intelligence, yeah, the emotional side of him, and he's he's it's the inexperience, yeah, yeah it's, it's the emotional intelligence and yeah. the inexperience, yeah. But anyway, um, you're in the corner with opposing one of the best in the world, Eddie Reynoso, yeah. who's team Canelo, you know? Yeah, yeah. So look look where you're at. Like little, little old South Pine in yeah. Australia. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You're, you're now screwing off some of the best in the world. Yeah, so yeah. look where you're heading. Yeah. All Star that was once just a, a new gym, which is still a new gym. And, and you know, I'm, I'm an advocate to see some of the amateurs coming through. Man, just I just see the evolution of All Star. Yeah. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah, that, really and that's wanna... when you say... Um, you know, like, do you pinch yourself sometimes? I don't. Even with that, I don't. I don't know. And that's not that's not an ego thing. That's not me going. Oh, I'm, I, I belong to be there. I don't know. I don't know why. I just don't. I. I we're just there mm. to do our best, as in win. And we don't. We will go again tomorrow. We have to. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What's the option? Mm. You're gonna hide under your pillow and hide away from the world and cry? No, that ain't it. You can't tell these kids to take the hard fights. You know, do your best, and it, it's it is what it is. And then you talk about it, you get on with it. It's, it's the yeah. Australian way. You have yeah. to you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, wow. So six weeks in America. Tell us what was what was your daily life like in America? Wake up, do what? Or what? What? Yeah. Very, very, very monotonous. Yeah. Very boring. How many times a week would you guys spar? Good, we'd train, good sparring. We train. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing yep. sparring. Um, we train six days a week. So yeah, Liam's up at whatever time he's up, and then. You'll go outside, get some sun. We go to the gym uh, at 11, train, um, and we leave training. And then Nikita and Tim come in after that. But we had little sections that we train at the same gym, but not sections, sorry, but time slots. Um, come back, ice bath, recovery, he'd sleep, and then get up, he'd do his, we'd either go, we'd sauna every day. Um, he'd do his, his running or his conditioning that night. Just six days. It's just, it's, yeah, it's nice. very boring, very monotonous. And That's why I say you don't need to go over there for as long as we did. That's my take from it because yeah. we, we're sparring one or two guys. You could just bring them here because you can do everything else. It, the, the thing is you need to get away from distractions. And you can do that up the Sunshine Coast. We could go and get an Airbnb up there and see your families on the weekends mm. and keep that, you know, because because Liam's such a great father and he's such a passionate dad, like far out. Like Was it's, it find a hard? Uh, it's, uh, obviously he would have, but I just mean he's such a great father that I think he'd get more from having – being able to see his kids once a week than having a face because every yeah. waking opportunity he has, he's on the FaceTime to them. So it's a distraction as much as it would be here seeing him on a Sunday. Yeah, okay. You know, he's, he's just, he's just, he's, you know what, more than being a world champion or more than being a fighter, he's put on this planet to be a dad, mm. Liam Wilson. I can tell you that much nice. for free. Like, yeah, that, that, the boxing for him, he, you, know, you see some people that, 
it becomes their identity. Mm. I hope he doesn't feel that's his identity. Okay. Because and I talked to him about that because his identity is a he's a father. Mm. His kids are yeah, everything. Nice. And I'm super proud of him for that because when I met him he was eighteen years old and I'm picking him up from the train station, taking him to the, the tennis courts where we were training at. Mm. And he didn't have a license or anything. To see him in turn into the father that he is, that uh, makes me well up. Nice. Wow. Because, you know, he's He's got his own story in that and yeah, super proud of the dad that he is, yeah. Nice. And this is where the strength between trainer and, and boxer athlete. Yeah. It, it's it's you you've done so many years uh, you know, all the training, rain, hail, shine, yeah, ups yeah. and downs, all of it. That's what losses. feel like sometimes that clouds me how much I love him and, and Vegas. I mean, these new guys in the gym, Tuisi and Billy, I mean, I'll make that, uh, Ben Hussain, I'll make that connection with them and the amateurs and Paul and Caden and you, like, I really love yous. <laughs> like, I really do. So that's straight from the heart. Everyone down here, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's real. Yeah. That's, what, that's what it is here. It's like it's, it's a family. Like, yeah. yeah. And you've got to have that trust. Yeah, the fighters have to feel. Yeah, yeah, they can trust the team. Yeah, sorry. And where I was going with that was that I can feel like I'm clouded by my emotion sometimes okay, yeah. with caring too much, rather than this is what needs to be done. That's probably better for some of these guys. But I like, yeah, that's what needs to be done in the sport. But I love you as a person. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, are you good? Are you all right? Do you need something? Like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, we we get it done. Like, hey, checking on them all the time and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know when I moved back from Thailand, the the early days, and you know I'm, I'm still picking up my life. Like after living away for two years, I come back to just home share. <laughs> you know, I still I come back to just having a rebuild. Yeah, and you were a big pillar at the start. Like yeah, you yeah. really supported me at the start. So where I'm at now, like is is a massive thanks to you and, and the club. Yeah, you know, for sure. Um, the, the, I came back to just boxing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So I. Like I understand that 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 strength of uh, more than just a trainer, yeah. fighter relationship, yeah. you know. So and I don't even feel like I feel like I should. Sometimes I think about it. I feel like I should hope that people feel the same, but I don't even. I I don't. I just do it because I care. I really care about you. Mm -hmm. And I say it's, it's it's so many people. I care about the five year old peewee like that I see every day. How you going, mate? How's your day been? Like it's mad. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I could literally lose the fighting. The fighting to me, you know, let Paul and Caden do that. I'll do it and I love it and I will and it's, I'm not, I'm not going to stop doing it. But if I could just come to the gym every day and be around people and help them grow and the, I feed off them, they feed off me, everything's sweet. Like I, I, like, I don't even coach my kids anymore. So I don't coach Taj, I don't coach Tanner, I don't coach Tyson. My oldest son, Tyler, he's finished. I coached him. But um, I let them – I just want to be a dad. Like I let Paul coach uh, – Paul coaches Taj and Tyson and Caden coaches Tanner and I just get to come down and watch and be a, be a dad and be around it and clutch for them and give them a hug when they win and a hug when they lose and it's mad. It's the best. And then it's good on you for doing that because that's, that's a hard thing for fathers and it's us to do. People would think that I should. Yeah, okay. You know, like having been coach uh, and got some guys to a great level, you'd think that I would but I've, I've just seen it from afar watching a lot of other coaches and people and how it puts a strain on it can put a strain on the relationship it can also be amazing and phenomenal it doesn't mean don't do it if you don't want it if you want to do it do it i mean go for it it's worked on so many times and it's failed way more than it has worked but it doesn't mean it can't happen but yeah i just it, it works for me i just i just see that I, and and also i have complete trust in the coaches that they have that's another thing if i if i did if i thought that i could do a better job for my kids i probably would but yeah i don't want to be clouded by the emotion of it and i just want to be those dad yeah so what's coming up next we we just had our uh all star fight night so we're not having two years so that's third that was 30th of april next one is november yeah november 9th or 11th i can't yeah. remember the actual date right now whatever the set whatever the saturday is one of those two dates so huge like uh how many well, like can you can you count how many people come through well, i don't know i don't I, must be close to a thousand. Yeah, it's going to be close to a thousand. And also, it's, it's built a brand in the south where the supporters come. Everyone is known who also is you know, the fighters. Some of the members that just want to have the fight for the first time yeah. and 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 call it quits. Like they they having that an experience. They can do that, you know. So you're also providing a platform for the pros, the amateurs. They want to be world level. 
those just want to have a have a crack, yeah. you know, and say, yeah, man, I wanted to bust up a trophy, but I had a good experience. And it evolved to that too. It didn't. We didn't start like that. We, it evolved to some corporates now. We have some corporates. And I never even thought of that as a thing because I didn't even look at corporate boxing like boxing. I didn't care. At the start, I was just so competitive and I just so wanted to, you know, be successful because I wasn't in, as a fighter. Is that I want, but now it's evolved to having some corporates and it's it's much more of a community feel than what it was when we were upstairs at the PCYC when the 430 class just trained over there. I didn't know any of their names. To now, it's like, mate, you, you have them around for a barbecue. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome, bro. So, any highlights from the weekend? Oh, the show. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The show. Um, well, Wayne Fapito for me, yeah. probably the one like that's that's a dad in the gym. I mean, he, he made his pro debut. Um, yeah, how, how cool is that? He's a father of three, um, three boys that fight. They're all phenomenal fighters too, out of out of our gym. And yeah, he's he put his money where his mouth is, and, and he, he stepped up and he, he had to pro fight, and he, he stole the show for me. That was um, that was crazy. I mean, far out. And they're, they're the uh, pro fight too, pro days pro fight. But just just for someone, he would never have thought he he never would have thought that he's ever going to have a pro debut. Yeah. He's never going to turn professional in boxing. He's a footy player. I mean, you know, and at however old he is, he's going to be late twenties or thirty to make his pro debut and have the, as many fans as he had there screaming like family and friends and his children, and his wife and man, how are you far. I mean, I had a heap of fights as an amateur, and I never got to go pro, so I never had that. I never got that, and it's something that I'll always regret. And it's not that I regret it, as in, you know, it doesn't eat at me because I had kids, and that's just the way it went. But, you know, for those guys that get to have one pro fight, win, lose, or draw, you get to experience something that some people that who put a lot of time into the sport, I thought had 80 fights from 12 to, you know, 22, uh, and never got to experience that. And, and it's, it would be very special. I mean, you got to do it, and it, I'm sure it's a lot different to the amateurs. Yeah, yeah. Scary. It's scary. But it's, it's all the emotions. Yeah. World to one, you know. Uh, so what's coming up? Next, uh, week, next week, we've got Benny Hussain. Yep. We've got Benny Hussain down on a limit card. He's fighting Mason Smith for his WBA Oceania title. Um, week, the, the month after, then we've got Billy Hussain and Tuisi fighting on another show down there. Month after, we've got Vegas, and then I'm guessing maybe a Liam or something like that. I haven't spoken about that yet. Um, we've got the amateurs coming up. They've got Queensland titles up in Cairns. Um, we had five kids in Canberra fight yesterday. Um, we had... The Friday night just gone. Today being Monday, we had some. We had two tournaments we were at. One at NTG. We had one at Fortitude. We got Aussies coming up in July over in Western Australia for the kids. Chidex is in America. Yeah, it's all happening. You know what it is, bro. You know how it right. goes. And uh, you know, like I, I love this now. Now that I'm, I'm I'm out of the fight game, like I still love the sport of boxing, and I think I've always loved it. Yeah, mate. It's, we get once you get the bug. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and. I've had some people say, oh, why, do you, why did you call it the All Sub Box Podcast? You know, but they don't understand that I, I've linked myself to a successful uh, club brand that's forever evolving. Yeah. Like, they, they don't see these kids that are coming through. I see a kid. Mm. I, I know they're the next future champions yeah, for sure. through. And, and I can't wait to really watch this club grow yeah. continuously because, like, Liam's that first one to really do it yeah, for the yeah. club. For himself and uh he's a huge part of it I, I i tell him this too like um the the gym wouldn't be what it is without liam wilson like you know he, he's 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 brought a lot of eyes to the gym he set a standard in the gym that wasn't there because you know we didn't have a, a phenomenal fighter like liam and when he came across it's like oh that's it that's where we got to get to and that's how he trains and that's how he thinks and that's what he does and you know it became what it was so even though he's not in the amateur system now, the amateur system's at such a high level, kick-started from Liam and myself with my competitiveness to get better and, and his ability, you know, I, I started, you know, stealing a lot of stuff that he was doing and working it out. And, yeah, that, that's just passed down the line now. Now, your Liam Wilson of the amateurs is Jai Dixon. And then you've got your guys under him trying to get to him and, you know, he'll, he'll move across eventually. And, you know, we don't even know where it ends up. But then the club needs that. The club needs that that someone at the top, yeah, to really aspire to become. Yeah, every be. club does, yeah. So we get to see the hierarchy here. Yeah. We see the talent, yeah. But we see the the camaraderie of the team that's yeah. here. They all pat each other on the back. There's, oh, there's no like to shout. 
even though it's it's, it's a it's a single uh, man sport, yeah. it's still a team environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is, and that's what I like. And if so, we lose that, then I'll shut the doors. Yeah, yeah, because we're not doing it for any other reason. As if you lose that, you become the pump that everyone's like, look at this, see ya. And I hate, I, I don't hate, but I think that, and I'm probably everyone watching will laugh. I, I hope we don't come across like that. This will be a, this will be sent to many people on Messenger. He thinks that he doesn't look, that they don't look like fucking pumps. They do. We don't mean to. We're just doing our thing. Like when we, like we don't give a fuck what you think about us, and we wish you all the best. And if you need sparring, come. We'll give you all the rounds we can, and if we can help you out, we will. It's not, there's no, there's not ego. I, I feel like it would come across like that, like it come, comes across egoish. It's, I can't, ex, it's not, it's really not that. It's really, really not that. And I know what, I know, as I say, I know it may, but yeah, take it from me, from my heart. It's, that's not the way it comes across. That's not the way it's meant. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure everyone will understand that. Like, they, they know that, you know, yeah. like everyone that knows you. Those are your, your for everybody. Yeah, but even even the amateurs, I know that we get to the tournaments, we get loud and we get that. We just love our people. That's it. Like we're t- we are we're representing us. Like we're representing ourselves. We're proud of it. Like the kids are proud of it. Paul's proud of it. Paul's a competitive guy. That's why he gets the success that he gets because he's a competitive guy. You can't rock up and not be competitive and get the results that Paul gets. I mean, you know, and not just Paul. Any other gym that that is successful. That's, they're, they're, you have to be super competitive. It doesn't mean that you're a wanker, like as in, you know, me or the, anybody at the gym. Like, you know, we're just passionate about our, our team. and It's just the industry. It's just the industry. No friends in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, eh? All right, both of you. <laughs>